All right, we're going to look at how to do a straightforward sky replacement. So we've got a picture of the lovely Cheddar Gorge here, but unfortunately it was a bit of an overcast day. There was practically no sky detail to speak of, and it just looks a bit drab and dull. And I've got a sky photograph that I took separately, which I then want to paste into this image. So this is a great image to use because there's lots of fine detail encroaching on the sky region. And of course, if we just do a simple selection and paste the sky in, it's not going to look very good. So what we've got to do instead is start off basic. So we'll pick up the selection brush tool. We'll increase the brush width and just make a selection of the sky. There we go. That's pretty much done it for us. Then what we need to do is choose the refine option. So this is the refine selection overlay that we can see here. And what we want to do is click drag over these finely detailed areas to mat them. Okay, you'll see all these branches and little details here have turned red, which is a good sign. So we need to continue doing this. across the entire skyline, like so. Also don't forget to paint over areas that aren't in direct contact with the sky, so to speak, but the sky detail coming through. So we'll just finish off the last of it over here. And I'll just use a bigger brush to tackle these last areas. Okay, some bits hiding up here. Always make sure you're at a suitable zoom level, otherwise that could have caught me out. Okay. So with our selection now refined, we have a number of output options. We can output it as a selection, a mask, a new layer, or a new layer with mask. In this case, we're going to output as a mask. So we'll choose mask and click apply. Now, obviously, we don't want to apply this mask to the original image. So what we'll do instead is drag the mask out on its own and just uncheck it or hide it for now. Okay, then we need to go across to our sky image, go to select, select all, edit and copy, then come back across to our foreground image and just go to edit and paste. Okay, so we've pasted the sky in, we need to select the move tool and just scale or reposition it to our liking. So for example, I might try and include this bit in the actual image. Then we want to click drag the mask and offer it to the sky layer as a child layer. So that's when you get this visible blue column here. So release the mouse button, then we can simply show the mask. Okay, so it's still early days yet. We need to make this sky match tonally with the foreground image. So there are a number of ways we can actually do this. One is to use a different blend mode on the sky layer. So we can use, for example, an overlay blend mode. And in most cases, that tends to work quite nicely. Alternatively, if we're not into that approach, we can set the blend mode back to normal. We could try lowering the opacity just to subtly suggest the texture of the sky. Or alternatively, we could also start adding some adjustments. So one thing we'll notice is the sky is way too saturated compared to the overall image. So having just added 
an HSL adjustment, I can click drag it into the background pixel layer here, which is the sky. Then as I start to adjust it, it will only affect the sky. On top of that, this needs some brightness and contrast adjustment. So once again, we'll add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And as before, we'll click drag it into the background pixel layer. So then, let's try increasing the brightness until we start to get more of a visual match. And we also need to find a good balance between the brightness and contrast. OK, so for this particular image, I think I actually prefer either using a lower opacity or an overlay blend mode. Or, of course, you can use all three techniques at the same time. An experiment by hiding the adjustment layers. We might use the HSL adjustment in this case in combination with a blend mode. And there we go. We've performed a fairly decent sky replacement. Let's just hide the sky layer to remind ourselves of what the original sky looks like. And then let's show the sky again. So there we go, just a nice, subtle enhancement of the image. Just by adding a bit of sky texture to it. Of course, once we've made our adjustments, we can then do any sort of final tonal adjustment to the image. And make sure that the adjustments are above both the foreground and the sky layers. So there we go. That's how to do a basic sky replacement. If you have any questions, please do ask on the official Affinity forums. And don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.